Today, we're going to talk you through a space phenomena known as orbital resonance. But first, we need to set up some basics. The Sun is at the centre of our solar system, and the Earth, other planets, and many additional bodies, such as asteroids, all orbit around it. As we head outwards from the Sun, we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and then a big gap before we reach Jupiter. This gap is populated by the asteroid belt, a collection of countless lumps of rock, both big and small, and in all shapes and sizes. As we continue to head out past Jupiter, we pass Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and eventually reach another collection of countless bodies, the Kuiper Belt, which also houses Pluto. Orbital resonance occurs throughout the solar system, including the shape in Saturn's rings. So let's look at what resonance actually is. There are a few different types of resonance that are all similar, but we're going to focus on just orbital resonance. Think of a person pumping their legs on a swing. They swing back and forth, but with each leg pump, their height or amplitude is increased. As a kid, you probably messed around with the timing too, like kicking at random points which makes the swing go wonky, but doesn't affect the overall speed. Or pumping twice as fast in one motion, which is actually a 2 to 1 resonance, but we'll get to that later. This is similar to planets orbiting the Sun. If an orbiting body has no external forces applied to it, apart from the one keeping it in orbit, then it will continue to orbit at the same speed and frequency for a long time. If another planet comes close enough for it to feel an effect, then their gravities will give each other a little kick, much like the legs pumping on the swing. This can have an effect on the future of its orbiting movement. There can either be random orbits given no overall effect, like the random kicks on a swing, or the planets are synchronised and there can be periodic orbits, meaning that one planet can start to speed up as the other slows down. This is exactly how Neptune was discovered, where astronomers could measure something in the solar system giving little kicks to Uranus's orbit. The asteroid belt is one such place that experiences a multitude of resonances. An asteroid can complete an exact number of orbits for every one orbit of Jupiter, and these are expressed as a ratio. For example, a 1 to 1 ratio would mean that for every one orbit an asteroid completes, Jupiter also completes one orbit. The most common ratios are 3 to 2, 4 to 3, and 1 to 1 asteroid orbital resonances with Jupiter, which are populated by clumps of asteroids that all stick together due to their common resonance. Orbital resonances can destabilise orbits, causing the bodies to change their motions year by year until they are completely in a different orbit. For small bodies, destabilisation is actually far more likely and results in a curiosity known as the Kirkwood Gaps. These are locations of gaps in the asteroid distribution, where asteroids have been ejected from these almost empty lanes by repeated perturbations from overlapping resonances. Sometimes, an asteroid will pass too close to a planet and be ejected from the asteroid belt entirely. Many of these circumstances apply to the Kuiper Belt as well. With the Kuiper Belt existing beyond the orbit of Neptune, hence the common name trans-Neptunian objects, it too, like the asteroid belt, is a clustering of objects in an orbit around the Sun, but the area is much larger than the asteroid belt, extending over a thousand times the size of the entire inner solar system. There are different dynamical classes of objects in the Kuiper Belt. Firstly, there are qb ones which are in a relatively stable orbit due to their distance from Neptune. They are not in resonance and so receive random tugs from Neptune, which have no overall effect. Next, we have Plutinos. These objects include Pluto and are in a 2-3 to three orbital resonance, meaning that Neptune orbits three times for every two orbits of the Plutinos. Lastly, there are Tutinos, and as the name implies, they orbit once for every two of Neptunes. So orbital resonances can be seen as little tugs here and there, pushing and pulling the solar system's object into a more ordered state. And with this, Earth seems to have thankfully settled into a nice position and hasn't been ejected into space. Well, so far anyway.